Welcome back to Medical Monday. Thank you for being with us today. I'm here with Dr. <coughs> John Drat, a psychiatrist in town. Uh, thank you for being here. The topic of tonight's show, holiday blues, depression, and pain. We're, we're working through the holiday blues section right now. If you have a question about any of those things, go ahead and give us a call tonight. We'll try to get those questions answered. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. We have the folks in the back to line up those calls, and we'll take them as they come in. I do want to explore this holiday blues a little bit further, and maybe for someone who isn't um, delving into the depression side of things, but the holidays are stressful on everybody. We're out of routine. You couple that with, with long gone, you know, ongoing family issues. It can get a little sticky sometimes. Do you have some <laughs> uh, ways to help us all cope a little bit? Well, I mean, some just basic um, strategies for this time of the year are, and they're going to sound basic, but they're real. Um, are to basically keep to your patterns. Mm. And you know, this is a time of year where most people go to too many parties, drink too much, yeah. eat too much, don't get enough sleep. And then that compounded with all of the traditional family stressors, mm -hmm. money stressors, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They, it becomes overwhelming for yes. a lot of people. And I mean, even people that are very healthy, you know, well-adapted patients of mine who 10 months of the year are rock solid, you know, fine, this time of the year they get stressed. <laughs> sure. And the, the, most, the, the most simple advice is to stick to your routines and don't, don't go excessive, mm. whether it be with too many parties, too many obligations socially, too much alcohol, too much food, too yeah. little sleep. I mean, all those things are kind of a recipe for disaster at a time of the year, which is historically stressful, even for people that are very stable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would just say keep it basic yeah. and try to, uh, you know, not go excessive, so to speak. For folks who have had a traumatic event this year, whether it's you know the loss of a family member or the diagnosis of an illness, I can only imagine that the holidays are going to be even that more tough. Right. Unfortunately, the holidays, they just magnify things, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's like, uh, who, who knows exactly why that is, but, peop but things that, you know, in March or April may be very tolerable and, and dealable mm -hmm. at the holidays seem to be, you know, magnified and incredibly difficult. So, you know, again, whether this has something to do with just historical kind of emotional loading is the term or whether it is to do with a decreased light cycle and kind of a propensity for a depressed mood, mm -hmm. period. People are lots of times not in their routines with getting out and exercising Yeah, because the days are short. You know, a lot of people at this time of the year leave for work in the dark and leave work to go home in the, in the dark, dark. Yes, and have minimal daylight hours to exercise or have fun with their families. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be a difficult time of the year, but my overarching advice for many, many years to patients and friends it has been to just keep things simple and don't overdo. If you have lost a family member and you always had a specific tradition as a family or with that person over the holidays, is it better to avoid it? <laughs> just change it, create something new, yeah. or try to do the same thing in a, in a new light? That it that really depends on the individual, and for some people, it's healthier to simply carry on with the traditions that are there despite the loss of a loved one. For other people, it's intolerable, mm -hmm. and I tell them, you know, if this is what you've done every year for Christmas, take a instead of doing it in your home where you've done it for 40 years. Now that your father or loved one is gone, go away. You know, do a do a quick weekend trip to the mountains or just mm. break up the routine to where you don't have to live through the the routine kind of uh, you know just ritual having, yeah. you know that you yeah. that you've been through for 30 to 40 years with somebody that you've lost so mm -hmm. everybody's different some people really do better mm. by sticking to the routine most people not most people do better breaking it up and doing something different mm. Very good, very good to know. Let's move into our um, our discussion that we wanted to get into about depression and pain and how they often go together. And I think, you know, you watch the news, you hear about chronic pain. Right. Heck, you can watch all the commercials and see all the commercials, you know, geared towards people who are suffering chronic pain. So we know that there is this problem out there. 
Depression, though, can go hand in hand with it. Can you describe, can you tell us why? Well, there, there are many reasons scientifically why, um, but the, the term in medicine for when one condition affects the other and then that affects that other one back is called bi-directional. Okay. So there is a bi-directional relationship between depression and pain. In other words, what pain makes depression and anxiety worse, and if you have depression or anxiety, you're more likely to have pain. And these are things that have to do with the brain and how the brain processes pain signals as well as the neurotransmitters involved with pain and depression, they overlap. Mm -hmm. So to this extent, interestingly, a local pain group called Pain Management Group, PMG, mm -hmm. they actually reached out to me a year or so ago to become their medical director of psychiatry hmm. within a pain clinic, Okay, which is a novel idea. But it's a, it's a forward-thinking one in that the, the patients are inherently predisposed when they have chronic pain to have depression and anxiety. And what we know is that adequately treating pain and depression within that population lowers the burden of opioid pain medication mm -hmm. treatments and other kind of burdens, if you will, of medications for pain. So, and then vice versa. So patients with chronic pain clearly have more depression and anxiety. Sure. So again, when I say bi-directional, I, I mean it. And, and basically treating one helps the other and vice versa. So. And, and the you know biology of it, it, it is in your head, but it's not like, oh, that's just in their head. We say it flippantly, but it right. really is <laughs> a brain issue. It is. It's a, it, it's a biochemical issue. And when people come to me who still have residual stigma about mm -hmm. you know being depressed and this is all in my head or it's a character weakness right. or something crazy like that, I, I tell them, yes, you know, I'm a psychiatrist and I deal with diseases of the brain, but, but what you have is a biochemical abnormality. It just so happens to affect the brain, not the thyroid or the liver or the kidney. Mm -hmm. it, it's a brain disease that is every bit as biochemical as hypothyroidism, diabetes, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then the treatments are every bit as legitimate mm -hmm. and, and helpful. But, you know, very few people now are so stigmatized like they used to be, but they're still, it's amazing, even young people, I'll see a 20, 21 year old, you know, student at Belmont who comes in and they're still just freaked out by the oh. idea that they have, you know, depression. Right. Uh, and, and when you vet, you know, go through that and explain this really is a chemical issue. I mean, large, they're, they're usually psychological issues involved. They're usually stressors, whether mm -hmm. it be relationship, family, school, money. You know, there are usually some stressors involved. But it, it many times culminates in the final common pathway of a biochemical issue that mm -hmm. needs treatment. Well, you say treatment. When we come back to this break, that's what I want to talk about, the different routes of treatment that folks can go down. So stay with us. And don't forget, if you have a question about any of this, go ahead and give us a call, 615-737-PLUS. We're coming right back on Medical Monday.